So welcome back, everyone. We're going to continue with Christoph Walfer talking about Node.js. <coughs> yes, thank you, everyone, uh, uh, for being here. Uh, and congratulations, you picked the right talk. Uh, here's some words about me. Uh, my name is Christoph Walfer. You can find me uh, and stalk me with my Twitter handle, Saint Lama. Uh, I'm organizer of um, Node.js uh, user group here in Vienna. Uh, we have regular uh, meetups scheduled, so uh, if you want to, to hear great talks about, about Node.js, that is for you. Uh, <clears throat> what is Node.js? Node.js is invented JavaScript on the server. Node.js is asynchronous. And Node.js is a single process, a single thread. <coughs> Node.js has a, has a small memory footprint, a memory as well as a file system. It runs almost everywhere, almost on every known, known media operation system, on your Raspberry Pi, on your Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, on IoT stuff like Tesla's Esperino in the cloud. <clears throat> and Node.js comes with a web server and uh, TCP servers baked in. This is the famous, this is the famous little little example uh, of Node.js to start a small web server that just echoes uh, requests um, um, that are that are uh, issued against port 8080. Uh, with Hello World. And you're currently used, probably using Node.js. If you're using Grunt, Gal, Bauer, Webpack, something like that, you're using Node.js. Uh, <clears throat> when you're using uh, Atom, Atom is built on Node.js. Slack uses Node.js. Even some games, game dev tagging, uses Node.js. The game is great, try it out. Uh, <clears throat> popcorn time, a bit illegal currently. Uh, <clears throat> and even Asia mobile services built by Microsoft are built on top of Node.js. Now a bit about my story with Node.js. Uh, I was doing strong type languages for 15 years. <clears throat> I hated weak typing. For me, weak typing was the beginning of a big mess. <clears throat> but somehow I had to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but somehow I had the feeling that the JavaScript is eating the world. And I want, don't want it to be a dinosaur in five years. So I bought a book. I bought many books of JavaScript and stuff like that. <clears throat> but the book that helped me most was JavaScript The Good Parts. That was in 2011. I installed Node.js version, version 0.4, stable, that was released in September 2011. And I had the feeling, now the fun can start. But it was awful. <laughs> <clears throat> I did not test anything. Every change, I bro <clears throat> broke everything in my small Pet project every time. I was doing object oriented programming at its best, and I hated JavaScript for its prototype chains. It was all a mess. The mess I expected. Uh, <laughs> Node.js did not like me, and I did not like Node.js. And now, four years later, I'm doing a super secret. It's not that super secret anymore. I'm doing a super secret startup with Node.js. 
what happened, what has changed. What makes Node.js awesome? First of all, that's, that's, the, that's the classic argument for Node.js, scalability. Node.js helps you build scalable solutions, but it's your responsibility to make the solution scalable. <clears throat> it's red safe by design. Uh, if you dig a little bit deep, deeper into, into Node.js programming, that's a bit of a lie, but... <clears throat> Node.js is quite graceful under heavy load. And of course, there is one thing that makes Node.js really awesome. That's NPM. NPM is the Node.js package manager. And NPM is dependencies done right. It's less version hell than in every programming environment I ever saw. <coughs> that gives development teams one language. One language to do front-end development and back-end development. And language is quite, quite important for communication. <clears throat> awesome applications are not written by a front-end team or a back-end team. They are written by an awesome development team. They need to communicate, they need to work together. <clears throat> it's about breaking silos. It's about breaking front-end development, back-end development, designers' silos. Tearing down walls. Node.js enables rapid development. You can start a web server just in milliseconds. <laughs> Doing integration tests, functional tests, quite fast. You do not need to deploy to an application server. Node.js has, has an HTTP server baked in. It has low-level TCP servers, uh, UDP server uh, also baked in. You can start a server within milliseconds. If you, uh, who is doing uh, Java? How long does a Tomcat uh, need to start up uh, with almost no application? <laughs> in? A cigarette lamp. <laughs> <laughs> You can start a server within milliseconds. That is, that is awesome. And we're doing functional tests and stuff like that. <clears throat> you can develop REST APIs without spending four days uh, doing infrastructure and stuff. Who is using Spring for doing REST APIs or RESTlet or stuff like that? Yeah, for, for, for configuring that stuff, yeah, you typically need some, need some time until everything is like you expected. <coughs> integration tests run within seconds. Integration tests in my, <coughs> in my applications are not just run on the integration server. I run them every time I do, I do run my tests. <coughs> and they need under 200 milliseconds about that to run. Node.js NPM has a vibrant community. In late 2012, there were 15,000 modules and 10 million downloads per month. <coughs> In late 2014, we had over 100k modules and over 500 million downloads. More modules does not mean more quality. Uh, it, gets, it gets harder from, from, from day to day to select the right module. <clears throat> I like the, 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 uh, the philosophy of Node.js modules. That's do one thing, but do that thing well. What still sucks? Error handling is a, <clears throat> is a mess when you're using callback styles. When you want to do node, <clears throat> use promises. JavaScript is still a bit mad. 
but it's not as bad as JavaScript haters want you to believe. JavaScript is a great language, but you have <coughs> you have to be um, to be in the language and not work against the language. <coughs> Asynchronous nature of Node.js can be quite cumbersome when you want to do some, some shell scripts or stuff like that. You want to have that sync. Node.js is not a silver bullet. <clears throat> when you hear a talk where someone suggests that Node.js will make your development life easier, that is not true. <laughs> Because Node.js does not solve the hard problems of software development. The hard problems are understanding your problem domain, building the right software, and it's teamwork and cooperation. The last point is almost every time the hardest for developers. Thank you for my very short talk, uh, listening to my very short talk. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I, I think I can feel the sympathy with you. I mean, I'm working with both of the uh, hard type or strong type languages like C Sharp and Java and also JavaScript. Um, I think what, I mean, the, my question toward you is that what you think is the right thing in Node.js? Is it the model? Is it the asynchronous model that it works? Is it how it's, uh, or kind of near to reactive model that it's using? Or is it the JavaScript language? Because if it's the model, then there are some variations, some other tools and frameworks, similar to Node.js that uh, let you actually use uh, strong type languages and uh, have the same model. But if it is the JavaScript, then there is no other solution than Node.js. Um, have you considered other frameworks like, I mean, um, as a sample, for example, the Vertex or, or uh, Akka or similar tools or frameworks that give you the same model that Node.js has, but in the strong type languages? Okay, uh, your question is, uh, if other strong type languages could give me the same benefits um, with... The of your model of the yeah. Node.js. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> What makes Node.js superior to them is uh, the community. Um, and um, <clears throat> when, you're, when, you're, uh, when you're writing frameworks, uh, strong typing is almost your, almost every time your, your enemy. For example, if, uh, uh, when, you, when you try to, to, uh, to write an, an, an ORM or a web framework or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, <clears throat> strong typing is is your enemy in that cases. So um, I think that the uh, all um, <clears throat> uh, the quality of the, of the module system in uh, in Node.js um, has something to do with um, with weak typing because uh, frameworks are easier to write uh, than in, uh, than in a uh, strong type language. Um, I did not really. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm taking a look at, uh, at Vertex uh, from time to time. Um, yeah, but then I take a look at NPM. Yeah. So, the, so you mean that the environment and the... Yeah. Have you tried the new JS6 and the generators? I guess that's kind of what they say is going to be the... Uh, thing that gets you uh, rid of the promises and the, and the callbacks. Um, <clears throat> uh, the question is uh, if, if if I if I try it um, ES6 um, to get a little bit rid of uh, callback um, problems with with error handling and uh, the promise stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'm using ES6 now. Um, uh, um, Coroutines like Co um, and stuff like that offer you. Um, a, somehow synchronous looking uh, uh, programming environment, but they're still based on promises. Mm -hmm. If you plan to do something with, with, with JavaScript now, 
I would suggest uh, for in Node. Um, in Node, we have uh, we have now Promise um, a prototype, so I would suggest to use Promises um, now with Node.js and coroutines and and, uh, and all that stuff. Uh, they are all built on on, uh, on Promises. Yeah. Obviously, it's just that uh, generators give you a chance to make it look like it's synchronous. Yeah. And it's uh, and it's pretty cool. Uh, use these ES6 features. They they uh, they help you build better code. Oh, yep. Um, a few months back, there was a fork from Node.js. I didn't follow up on that. Has it been resolved? Are there not two Node.js now? Um, <clears throat> Node.js four um, was a merge of, of the of the of the fork. So it has been resolved and the community has he or what was the issue actually? What was now the outcome of that? <coughs> um, I mean, um, Node.js uh, should be, uh, in, um, in my point of view, um, innovation friendly. That innovation friendly means a lot of releases and I expect that the, the year 6 features in some some releases in uh, uh, in the past, but <coughs> they did they did not they did not use some some, some newer newer uh, VH, uh, script engine uh, engines under the hood in the Node.js branch, and <coughs> uh, we did we did <laughs> we did all need to wait for these ES6 features too long. So um, I guess this this. <coughs> The branch, the branch, uh, uh, um, the reason for the branch was that Node.js needed some innovation boost, boost again. And by resolving that, that uh, the branch, uh, we now have uh, ES6 features. The branch was, was good now. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, you mentioned that uh, in 2011, you read the good parts, and I was wondering, what what references would you recommend to someone aspiring to get into JavaScript and Node now? <laughs> uh, 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 the question is, uh, what uh, uh, what references I would recommend to to, uh, to get into JavaScript and Node.js? Um, to be to be honest, uh, I did not read uh, any any JavaScript books uh, in the past four years. <laughs> uh, uh, I did a lot of uh, uh, learning by doing. Um, I, would, I would recommend learning by doing. Thank you. Uh, thank you so far. Um, you mentioned uh, testing is a very fast thing on JavaScript. Um, I know that. I'm also a JavaScript developer, we'll say actually. Um, but there is still one thing which can be uh, quite hard, which is uh, when you do UI testing. Have you also done that? And if so, what's your stack? Are you using like Phantom JS and uh, Cucumber maybe and Selenium or? Um, the question is, um, do I do uh, UI uh, <coughs> testing and what do we use? Um, to be honest, uh, I'm coming from the from the from the backend developer side. Uh, and I don't do UI testing. What I now recognize um, is that UI testing in my own applications uh, would have been a good idea. But starting with UI testing, uh, um, but um, I would have to, uh, to start with UI testing um, a year ago. Now it's a little bit too late because but um, I will I will do some some UI tests and I cannot recommend uh, a stack currently. Uh, you said that uh, Node.js is a single credit, and you also said that it scales very well. So this means that it's that it has good scalability. Um, so this means to reach that scalability, I have to insta uh, to uh, use a lot of Node.js instances. And do some middleware, or what do you think about? Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the question is um, how to achieve uh, no chairs uh, scalability since no chairs uh, is single thread. Um, you, 
the, the, the enabler for, for, for scalability is uh, asynchronous operations. It's, it's a bit of a lie that no chair is a single thread because <clears throat> the, uh, the JavaScript execution part is single threaded. If you do uh, an I.O. operation, for example, you read a file, you more or less suspend, you suspend that JavaScript um, um, <clears throat> evaluation at that point and uh, hand over control to some thread in the background that reads the file. When the thread in the background is finished reading the file, it hands over control back to the JavaScript processor. Uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, other JavaScript stuff can run. So, uh, <clears throat> single thread is a bit of a lie. Uh, your JavaScript part is single threaded. And uh, scalability is achieved through asynchronous operations. That means uh, if you want to if you want to do heavy computing in JavaScript in Node.js, that's a bad idea. It's it's well suited for everything that has something to do with I/O. The web is I/O. Plain socket programming is I/O. Um, the question was um, uh, if I did try to use TypeScript on Node.js. Um, no, I did not, uh, because um, I think uh, putting some some uh, some simulation of static typing on top of a, of a weak type language uh, is uh, the wrong approach. Uh, I did not try that. But it's quite popular um, among among .NET guys um, when they uh, they uh, shift over to to, uh, to Node.js and yeah we have TypeScript uh, everything is good. I did not try that uh, because it's it's it's, it's wrapping things uh, that. What about your secret startup? <laughs> 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 uh, it's, it's, it's not that secret anymore, uh, and uh, um, it's, it's currently it's currently uh, quite buggy, uh, um, uh, <laughs> and in some some private alpha step testing stage, um, yeah, we can uh, <clears throat> we, we can talk about that afterwards, <laughs> and it's quite buggy. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Thank you, Lynn.